Hello everybody, it's Sissy Medhaven here today, and we're going to be taking a look at the AMBT, the uh, one of the most recent releases uh, to the game, less than two weeks ago at the time of recording this. I've I put quite a few matches inside the tank, a total of 41 of them, and in the time of, you know, well, 42 matches actually, in the time of putting 42 matches inside the AMBT, I have a couple of things that I can say about the tank with certainty, and a couple of, like, it's... It, I, I've got negatives and positives about the tank. Um, the time that I've spent playing it, it hasn't been bad. But I just, I don't recommend it. And it's not the reload, it's not the top speed, it's, it's something else. And I'll get to it once you guys start seeing the replays and everything else that I have for you guys today. Other than that, let's go ahead and start jumping into, uh, yeah, statistics, I guess, since it's the first thing I had up to double check the matches I played. So... I've maintained a 3,542 WN8 overall inside the tank. Along with that, I have gotten a, just come on, a mastery badge inside the tank as well. Um, sadly, I do not have the mastery badge replay, but I have a lot of screenshots on the tank and everything else. It's probably one of the only tier 8s I've, I've managed to achieve 5k a total of 9 times in 42 matches. So that's a lot of damage. For a tier 8. So, let's go ahead and jump into statistics here. Uh, if you guys are looking to pick up this tank for yourself, you are looking at a cost of 9,850 gold. So, that's after the discounts that I got for 7,000 on the tank, and that's going to be getting released. So, your standard penetration, you're looking at 215, 278, and then 53. Uh, your alpha damage, you're looking at 360 across the board until you load the high explosive for 420. Hit points, 1,300. Max speed, 40. So, that 40, it doesn't feel bad, but at the same time, for how the tank is put together and designed, it doesn't feel good either. It 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 feels like it, you're 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 fast, but for a medium tank and what this thing wants to do, you're slow. Along with that base view range of 400 meters, I highly recommend that you take situational awareness and optics. It, like mandatory i hate to say that mandatory on this tank because without it you're not going to be able to spot out a lot of people you're not going to be able to handle um a lot of situations up next is concealment 0.25 that is a little bit less than some light tanks if you want to work on your steel concealment i do believe you can get it down to 287 with camouflage expertise silent driving a camouflage net and uh, basically all the camo that you can try and apply in a tank naturally with your perks. Um, but overall, I, I, I'm not impressed with the concealment gameplay inside the tank. Because even with that 280 to 290 range of still concealment, whenever you're moving, you just get spotted out like there's no tomorrow. Up next on the list, we're looking at 8.75 rounds per minute, which is a lie. This is... It it's it it can't achieve eight point five seven rounds a minute. And looking over inside the garage as well, it says six point six one. Um the rate of fire inside this tank is nowhere near what they're saying on the statistics here. This is a complete lie. Um you have to clip out constantly if you want to achieve that, and this DPM is only capable one time every three minutes. So don't trust what you see on the DPM here. Um, at 11.7 base reload of what I have. So let's take uh, 60 seconds divided by 11.70. We're looking at 5.12 rounds a minute. This is what your actual DPM is if you're only firing. Or 1.13. 1. 1. Well, 5.13. 1.13 would be a horrible DPM. Ugh. But the... There's there's a lot of mislabeled statistics on this tank, and I've had to go over and make sure that I have them correct because I'm not gonna jump in and just read off stuff to you guys. It it's if you have to fire all of your shells, or you have to swap ammunition type, you're looking at 42 seconds before you're fully loaded and ready to go again, which isn't bad depending on you know like what you're doing or if you're top tier or bottom tier. Up next, we're looking at penetration, which we kind of already read off, 215, and then you got 278. Reload time, 15 seconds. Okay, once again, um, 
We have one shell for reload, yet you have a three-shot clip. This right here is very misleading. Um, with a gun rammer, uh, rapid loading, born leader, uh, improved ventilation, it's 42 seconds. You take off a gun rammer, you're looking at like 55 seconds, 50, 48 seconds in the range of that. So a lot of the statistics, as I said, are just off heavily because they're not labeling them correctly inside of their website or anything else, which to me is getting a little bit irritating because it means that I have to take time out to make sure that I know what's going on at the tank. I know what's happening then there, this, that basically this is all mislabeled heavily and I just don't approve of it. Along with that aim time of 2.7, I've got mine down to 2.44 with my perk loadout. Uh, and it, you know, your, um, initial clip reload at three seconds in between each cell, six seconds for a full clip out for quite a bit of damage. I actually haven't done the math on what it is. And honestly, 360 times three, just not want to click inside my brain right now. So 720 uh, brain fart. There we go. I'm just, I'm not even going to do the last part. It's a good amount of clip damage It's above a thousand, but it's, well, not above a thousand, like what, nine, 908? No, that's wrong. It's like, what? I don't know. I'm not going to, you know, is the calculator still up? Nah, I'm not worried about it. Oh, okay. So reload time, shell auto loading time. What is this? Shell reload time, 15 seconds. And then shell auto reloading time. Do we have two weapons on this tank? No, we only have one. So why do we have a reload time and then a shell auto. Okay. My brain hurts. Ammo capacity, 36 rounds, accuracy of 0.38. Mine is down to a 0.3 currently with the loadout that I have, uh, nine degrees of gun depression, allowing the sink to work a ridge line, 10 degrees of elevation. That's not that good. 250 turret armor. Um, sad to say this is another lie that they are misleading quite a bit on this 250 on the outskirts of the gun mantle. And then after that, your armor starts to decrease heavily all over the tank. So a lot of, you know, just it's all mislabeled once again, which is not fun. Up next on the list, we're going to be looking at a, another massive brain fart because everything that they do. Uh, traverse speed, 28 degrees, not too bad on the uh, turret. Uh, view range, 380, already went over that. Engine power, we're looking at 615, went to 18.6 power to weight. It's not, a, it's not too bad. With a top speed of 40, you're going to find yourself always maxing out your top speed and actually maintaining that 40. So if you want to, you can take a traction system on this tank to give you that 44 kilometers. But then your reverse speed is only going to benefit by maybe like uh, 1.8 or something with it. So, I mean, it's up to you. Or you can use a power terrain, go 42, but have additional power to weight to make sure that you get up those hills quicker. And be able to uh, reverse faster with that additional power to weight. 10% uh, fire chance. Um, in the 42 matches I've invested inside the tank, I have not been set on fire once. I have experienced a little bit of an ammo rack problem, however, but nothing too crazy. Your ammo racks are actually pretty defended because of how you should be playing this tank, which is approaching frontally, avoiding side scraping because of the way that your hull armor is designed. Um, up next, tracks. We're looking at 32 degrees of traverse speed. Terrain resistance, 1.1, 1.3, and 2.1. So you have hard, medium, and soft. So I do recommend off-road driving on this crew to try and get these terrain resistance a little bit better. That way you can actually utilize the full power to weight. Um... Yeah, I don't know what else to go over. Uh, signal range, 745. It's not bad. It's good for assist and communicating with the team. Up next, let's go ahead and take a look at this tank. So a lot of people might think that they can kind of overexpose a little bit, but I have had a massive problem with this top plate where people bounce off it and the shells just immediately go into the lower part of the turret. And I would say out of the 42 matches I've invested inside the tank, this has happened maybe once every other game. It's pretty consistent how often this does happen. Uh, your hatch on top, you don't really got to worry too much about that if you're using maximum gun depression. But one of the biggest problems this tank does have is if you're shooting into the gun mantle with over 265 plus penetration shooting the gun mantle, uh, you're just going to rip right through it if you have enough APCR or AP penetration. Heat rounds, on the other hand, they will get absorbed. 
because there is considered all space armor right here and it will just immediately get absorbed because it just can't travel through all of it. Um, up next is we're taking a look at the standard variation. Let's go ahead and refresh the page here to flatten out the tank. Uh, one of the biggest problems that a lot of people might run into, we are going to compare this to a heavy tank, the 112 with AP rounds. Immediately, you guys can already see the top armor here is only 40 millimeters thick, so 122 calibers and larger are going to be able to overmatch the entire forehead of the tank, no matter the gun depression that you are maintaining. But if you are using max gun depression, that weak spot does disappear on top of the forehead. But you want to make sure that whenever you're peeking over a ridge, that your reticle is barely over the ridge at all. If it's if you can see their entire tank and your reticle's overexposed a little bit, they can put shells into the bottom part of your turret, which will lead to a problem. Now, against 122s, you only have 40, 40 millimeters of side armor across the entire side, and your ammo rack is also located right here and also located on the lower part if trying to side scrape. So that's kind of the reason why I'm saying avoid side scraping inside this. Use it more as a front row brawler. If you need to side scrape and you need to work a side corner, come in at a heavy angle and overexpose your front armor rather than trying to side scrape because your lower plate's 100 millimeters and your top plate's 70 millimeters, which cannot be overmatched by any gun in the game unless you're being shot at by a bar with its 305 millimeter gun. And that thing has two degrees of left and right on the turret and no gun depression and like 75 degrees of elevation. That thing's a meme. I, I free XP'd it the other day and yeah, I have no regrets except for the one I made pulling up against an E5, helping the overmatch a side armor. Now against enough penetration, this tank will suffer against heat rounds. For instance, over here in the cheeks, you're looking at 250, 270. So we can actually go ahead and jump into a tier 10 here, 113. It's always Chinese because they're the fastest to get your hands on against heat rounds and against 340 heat pin. You're going to be looking at your side turrets here. So as long as tier eights have like 270 in the range of that, they will be able to continuously penetrate the lower parts of the turret if you are not using your gun depression. But if you are, uh, you're looking at an effective 300 millimeters in the range of that if you're using your max gun depression. So if you're using your max gun depression and you're barely exposing over a hill, this tank will perform wonders. However, if you're driving on flat land or not fully utilizing your gun depression, there are quite a few weak spots against tier 10s and a couple of weak spots against tier 8s and your gun mental that you have to worry about. So, take it a little bit slow while you're inside this tank. Other than that, let's go ahead and jump into some replays here. Uh, first one, we're going to be looking at Hidden Village. I actually do enjoy Hidden Village since they added it back, but there is a few things that they can do to make it a little bit better. Um, one of them being uh, kind of uh, lighten up on the crossfires from entering areas, because clearly some sides of the map are better than others. And as you guys can already notice, there is nothing but APCR loaded inside this tank. So a lot of the pros inside the uh, AMBT. Let's hit all the pros first. Um, decent mobility. Not enough mobility to relocate consistently, but enough mobility to get to a very aggressive position, be able to lock it down, utilize your gun depression, very difficult turret to pin when using maximum gun depression. You kind of have to rely on hitting that hatch to be able to do anything against it. Um, along with that, the armor may not be the thickest all around the turret. You know, you're looking at 250 on the inner mantle, which honestly... It's the inner mantle. There's nothing really to worry about that. 155, scrolling down. Your turret's in the range of 125 and slowly decreases down to 70 millimeters to 80 millimeters of effective armor all around the turret and the frontal part, along with your top armor being 40. And you got a top bar right underneath the turret as well, so if someone does fire into the turret and they ricochet... The shell that's going to bounce around underneath the turret is just going to go through almost guaranteed because your top armor on top of the tank is 30 millimeters and if they ricochet out the top of the turret, which more than likely, like by top of the turret, I mean underneath the gun mantle, there's going to be no bouncing because it's only 30 millimeters of effective armor all around it. Uh, right here, I should have actually backed up and kind of got a little bit further back 
that way I could have been using my gun depression. But because Blade is a little bit newer to working the inside right there, and I want him to kind of learn the inside, I actually had to overexpose a tad bit to be able to get a couple of shots off. And honestly, I didn't think about it until later inside the match to back up to that back position. So it is my fault for, you know, playing like a Muppet right there. Also, those butterflies almost look like they were taken out of some 80s movie. Look at them. They're beautiful. They're, they're pixelated. <laughs> they're pixelated and having so many problems. Now, overall pros of the tank, you do have a double shot burst potential, which will put you out of the fight for a total of 25 seconds if you're running the same setup that I'm running on the tank focusing out the reload and not really paying too much attention to the accuracy of the weapon. And, you know, with equipment wise, I'm running a basic loadout. And the thing is, I don't feel comfortable changing that loadout because sacrificing the reload in any way causes a lot of problems. And with that double shot, you know, double shot potential that you do have, you can throw out two shells and not really worry about it because firing off two rounds, the second round inside the magazine doesn't feel too bad, even though I'm looking at a 13.9 second reload, so 14 if you round it off. And then for the final shell, 11.7 seconds, you know, every single 14 seconds firing my gun, it doesn't feel that nice. But with the way that the A and B T is put together and then the penetration you have in your premium rounds with the penetration value as well, you have 278 in the premium, your damage, your uh, penetration fall off hits 249. If you want to use iron mace with it, you can, but it kind of feels like a wasted perk by this point. Your standard shells have 215 pin, but at 500 meters, they do drop down to 184 meters. So usually for firing within that comfort zone of 350, you're looking at about 200 millimeters of average penetration. So right here, knocking down the tree, kind of hoping that it would, you know, give me a little bit of the concealment I needed to be able to pull out and s spot the uh, 705. But sadly, it wasn't enough. And going to start pushing up a tad bit here. As I take a sip of my drink, I'm getting ready to go into work. It's like, there's no point to mention that. People a year from now are going to look at this and be like, wait, are you still getting ready? No, no, I'm not. But a AMBT, um, I, I am impressed with it. But there's a lot of things about the tank that it just takes away from. In all honesty, with the way that this tank is put together, I kind of wish that the Basante had this reload rather than this tank. Um, along with that, it's just, it, it feels nice. The gun handles good. And the way that the armor's put together, how your tracks are actually overexposed a tad bit on the tank, that they're popping out a little bit more than um, your average tank. So basically your sprockets are popping out a tad bit, which means that if you do decide to um, bait shells coming from the front, that people are going to aim at the inside drive wheel and they're going to fire, but there's nothing behind it except for the thickest part of the armor. So that does help out quite a bit. And Sono 5's, their fuel tank is on the, the right side in the front. And it, I always, it's, always, it's a satisfying feeling to always set one of those on fire. And with the burst potential, the module damage, you're looking at 150, which is actually really nice module damage to have because at 150, you can damage an ammo rack within one shell, not needing to put two shells in to be able to do it. And then your second shell, basically, you can pop a top. In the time that I played this, the 42 matches, I actually did pop the top of three tanks using the double shell capability that I can dish out. So that is nice that you can do that. Um, along with that, shell velocity, your standard rounds, you're looking at 1,278. Your premium rounds, you're looking at 1,500 minus 8, you know, so 1,492. Uh, your high explosives do slow down quite a bit at 732, but that's okay. You know, it's HE. If you got to load them in, you're kind of already in a close engagement or you're looking just to finish off what hit points are left over. But the problem is, is that swapping to the high explosives, it takes so much out of you because you're out of the fight for 42 seconds. You know, it's like, unless you want to load the one shell and take all that time just to be able to get one shot in, you know, you're looking at 
15.4 second reload to be able to swap to your first one. Um, right here telling Blade to back up. Let's head up the hill to confuse the artillery. Second that we're unspotted. Stop, back up, and flip around. Avoid making contact with any trees and, and Blade being Blade. He hit the one and only tree. <laughs> Freaking Blade. He's, he's probably watching this right now, cussing me out. But that's okay. I'm, I'm going to make sure I give him as much crap as I can. Um, originally, I wanted to do a live uh, replay of this tank, and I wanted to do a live review with Blade. Uh, but due to time restraints and matchmaking, um, going back to consistent tens on every single team, with this one being one of the only ones today that was actually a pretty decent lineup inside the A and B T. It's uh, the last matchmaking test that they did with peer to peer. I actually really did enjoy that one. Um, I did see a lot more mid range to high tier games rather than being bottom tier all the time. And me, I actually enjoy playing my tier eights more than I do playing my tier tens. There's a lot more variety inside tier eight that does it. It's just a lot more enjoyable. Now everyone should know this back up, get behind a bush, fire, not detected. Pull forward. Fire. Not detected still because it was the final shot on the target. I do believe I did get spotted. I don't know if I, the audio popped up or not though. But. Bushes, people. Bushes and trees. Knock them down. They provide concealment. They give you a massive advantage. And they just feel so much nice. Uh, keep in mind, do not look at the silver earned. I am using two times boosters on the AMBT. I have over 400 of them and I'm just trying to waste them as much as I can trying to get rid of what I have because I have an absolutely absurd amount of XP boosters. And up next, I believe this is uh Pilsen. Yes. Pilsen against tier nines and tier tens. Uh, E fifties are basically the bane of existence for the AMBT because their standard shells can rip through your gun mantle. And uh, that's, you know, if you, if you enjoy your E15 or E50M, just know that uh, A and BTs do not like you. Stopping, aiming, uh, trying the snapshot goes into the tracks. Probably should have taken a bit more time to aim that shell, but it's okay. It's early game. I'm just going to throw a shell. Kind of hope that it's going to work out a tad bit. Um, this replay here is going to show you the reload whenever you have to clip out multiple times and just how frustrating it is knowing that your reload is just non-existent. Um, in my opinion, these tanks should have faster reloads. Uh, for instance, the AMBT is is literally a second off of what PC has for their reload because of our perks that we have in game and the benefits that we get from reload inside of a console. But my AMBT on PC only has like three perks. And yes, I did get it. I spent 17,000 gold to get my hands on one of the AMBTs and they released them with the Caravan on PC. And I love this tank on PC and I hate E50s on PC whenever they see the AMBT because they just go through my turret all the time. It's not fun. But this tank, I I was super stoked to see that it's going to be getting released. Right here, I'm actually checking to see uh, if those um, pillars are actually physical and then aiming up and then went 9 meters. So... The pillars you can shoot through, but you can't shoot through the uh, glass window frames that are there. A little confusing that you have wood that probably has a better chance of deviating around, and yet you have a glass pillar which completely stops rounds. Like, that's some super thick glass. I was just looking at it, kind of thinking to myself, that's a little funny. Uh, right here, patiently waiting. Uh, I want to try and bait a shell from the Tiger 2, just waiting for him to fire. And... There we go. He fires at the wall, and even if he would have hit us, he would have bounced because we were at a uh, hyper angle with our hall. Now here, we're going to be pushing forward. Uh, coming up in a sec, there is an overmatch that happens to me. And we're going to go for the track, track and damage. There we go. We're going to pull up a little bit. We're going to wait because E50M already used his repair kit. We're going to track and damage. And we are going to throw one more shell into him to finish him off with our damage. And basically full damage and full assist on that E50M uh, did absolutely everything to him. Now coming up 
right here. I do believe this is the overmatch that's going to be popping up here in a second. I do pull over. I want to try and track the uh, Barracuda, but I aimed a little bit too high. And there's the overmatch on the top armor. Tried raising my barrel. Hopefully, I'm going to try and stop a shell from coming in and overmatching the 40 millimeter plate. Uh, the waffle, even if he was firing heat rounds or he's firing basically anything he fires, can go through that top armor. 334 heat pin from that angle is going to go through. His 150 can overmatch it. His 12.8 can overmatch it. And here, just looking away, snapshotting once I'm loaded, getting the kill in the Barracuda, just continuing down left as far as I can get. Well, not really as far, more like getting to a comfortable haul down position and uh, kind of hoping that we're going to see the uh, Waffly 100 pop out because I, I wanted to try and get two shells for payback into him, but uh, so far not... No, not seeing them. So now waiting on the reload. We're taking a look at the UDES. We're going to put one, two, hitting the ammo rack in the rear end of the UDES, and three. And now we're out of the fight for essentially 42 seconds. And this is kind of where the tank starts to lack a little bit, but the burst potential it does have, using the double shot capability, using everything else that the tank has to offer, it is a nice tank. Along with that, I'm not even using a medium tank crew on this. I'm using my heavy tank crew, uh, trying to thread the needle there with the uh, basically your reticle the size of the moon and hoping, you know, because RNG, I was kind of praying to RNG Jesus that the shell would just fly straight. But sadly, no. Uh, other than that, this is about it for this replay. Nothing else really surprising happens. I don't get another shot in. It just continues on all the way to the end. And, um... So the E50, the E50M, we did track him out. We did get the full assist on him. And uh, going to the scoreboard, I do believe inside this recording that I did bring it up and show it off. Also getting a medal for killing two tiers, you know, killing two tanks above me by two tiers uh, right here. I do believe I accessed it with four kills. Uh, no, the replay. I, I guess I didn't show off what I was talking about. I guess I'm just being a Muppet. Okay. So A and B T. Um, the, the, the biggest things about this tank that I'm actually probably done playing the tank now that I've invested all this time into it. Um, the Czechoslovakian tanks came into the game and a lot of the Czech tanks can actually use advanced reload on their tank because of the way that they're put together. So advanced reload, they can swap ammunition with their double shot and they can do it continuously with switching their shells. But then coming back to the AMBT, for instance, and taking a look at this, we don't have advanced reload. So the number one reason why I, I don't recommend the AMBT. If you want to use standard rounds, you know, use, uh, 18 standard rounds, whatever left inside premium and high explosives. The biggest problem that you're going to run into is swapping ammunition. It is unreliable of swapping ammunition. It just consistently unreliable. Um, along with that, the reloads too long to sacrifice gun rammer or to try and make a concealment crew to rely on anything else. Um, for instance, if we take a look at, uh, the French, which surprisingly I don't have my uh, Borask uh, hooked up currently, which is actually probably one of my more favorites. The Borask, even without a crew inside the tank, currently has a 25.89 reload. And that's with a double shot capability. And that's also without a crew inside it as well. So the Borask with its double shot has the same reload as actually a better reload because you got 11.7 and um, 13.9. Actually, it's a little bit worse than the Borask without a crew, but then with a crew, you're looking at 22.38, which is now delivering those two shells faster than the AMB. Yeah, than the AMBT wants to. Like it, the Borask is already superior, just in gun handling and reload time by itself. But aim time, uh, AMBT does beat it because it's got 2.44. Now. I no, thank you. Go away. Uh, you know, if if we had more 
perks inside the game or a properly done system like intuition that they have over in PC where whenever you swap ammunition types, it's got an interclip reload of like five seconds, depending on the amount of shells that you have inside your clip. And then it loads one shell immediately, like the way PC does it with uh, intuition. Like if you're using an advanced reloader, it actually swaps one shell already preloaded, which means that you're out of the fight for 25 seconds. If they were to add a mechanic in game, that makes it to where if you're fully loaded and then you swap shell types that it already preloads the first shell immediately and then you start your reload on your second and third shell, I think that would be much better. But since we can't use advanced reload on the AMBT and we don't have the proper perks or the proper equipment to actually utilize this tank correctly and that you kind of get focused out inside this play style to where you're stuck being forced to use one ammunition type or you're going to be just putting yourself at a massive disadvantage trying to swap shells in the middle of a fight because you can't pin a target. I, I can't recommend this tank to everyone. The only people that I can recommend the AMBT to are the people who are willing to fire premium every single game. Or the people who don't care you know, about shooting premium all day, that they just want to play the game and enjoy it. If you want to use this tank to enjoy it, I can actually recommend a tank that's far superior than the AMBT, which is the TL1 LPC. I love the TL1 LPC. This is a very underrated tank. Extremely powerful. Extremely beautiful. You know, it's it, in my opinion, this is one of the top performing tier eights inside the game currently, and it's very hard to beat. AMBT has tried to jump in to take that title from it, but it kind of fell under with that increased reload that all of the advanced auto loading tanks kind of got slapped with and basically made them unusable. But with the AMBT, its reload's not bad enough to the point where it's a Basante. I, I, as I said at the start of the video, I wish the Basante C45 actually had the reload of the AMBT because that would make the Basante actually worth playing. So, overall, uh, AMBT, it is a good tank. The, the sad thing is, we don't have the equipment to properly use the tank. If, you know, like PC, they, they balance this tank around what they currently have. Consoles has brought it over. And we, we lack what PC has. What I have on PC, which is I have intuition on this tank. And a ton of other perks that do benefit the tank heavily. You know, repairs, everything else, gun handling. It's, on console, it's just inferior and not worth the pickup unless you only fire premium out of it. The reload time in between swapping is just too long, and I just can't recommend this tank for anyone to really pick it up. So, other than that, you guys, I don't think this tank is worth 10,000 silver, and it's probably just going to start gaining dust inside my garage now but you know even though somehow i'm on watt stars number two inside the tank currently on the 90 day ratio which actually right here number two entirely with 3940 and then flying egg right above me at uh 3950 it's it's just a tank that i i don't recommend i would say there's far better tanks in the game to get than the AMBT because of the way that this, is, this thing's put together and it's lacking in just a lot more ways than just one. We don't have the proper equipment. We don't have the proper crew loadouts. We don't have uh, enough of what you want for the tank. And then other tanks get benefits that this thing doesn't where they can use advanced reload. And single shot tanks, for instance, like uh, the Kriovitz 1, probably the best example. One of my favorite tanks. Over 600 plus matches played inside of it. Um, Kriovitz, 10 second reload without a gun rammer, 930 alpha. You know, and the, my Kriovitz mows over A and BTs and Basantes all day long. Because it has a reload and it has armor, it has top speed, mobility. And it just tears these things apart left and right. So other than that, you guys have a fantastic day, night, afternoon, whatever time it is that you guys are catching this. Or if you're watching it a year from now. If a year from now they did change some of the reload mechanics inside the uh, advanced auto reloader tanks, then maybe, just maybe, they might be worth the pickup. But without that, I just can't recommend them. The AMBT is an absolutely fantastic tank. 
but unless used properly, which is literally firing nothing but gold, it's not worth anything because of how long it takes to reload. And that's it. Other than that, leave a comment, like, subscribe. Seriously, leave a comment. Let me guys, let me know what you guys think about this. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. Um, other than that, let's go ahead and take a quick gander at the crew that's on this. That's my heavy tank crew. Born leader, rapid loady, rapid aim, steady aim, clutch braking, off-road driving, track mechanic, sixth sense, and situational awareness. Um, that's just basically my heavy tank crew. I didn't really feel like this tank benefited from my medium tank crew, so I threw the heavy tank crew on it, kind of seeing how it worked. It actually worked out a lot better than the medium tank crew. So, you guys, have a great time. I'm out. Hopefully this helped you make up your mind if you want to pick it up or not, because I just don't recommend it unless they decide to actually fix their equipment system and remove the two perks that we have that are literally pay to win. If you're not paying to win, you cannot use those perks. So, sadly... This is um, just going to become a giant paperweight for me sitting inside the garage. And yeah, I need to find a way to just to go mm, click at the button.